must eat brains from video games to flash mobs and even the CDC's website. It seems like these days just about everything is coming up zombie. But if you want to know where the undead are really making a killing, it's on cable TV, thanks to the success of the AMC show, The Walking Dead. The show's third season wraps up this weekend with a finale that is expected to set Twitter on fire. The lead's Aaron McPike is here with more on why so many TV viewers are putting a new twist on the term deadheads. That's right. Well, Jake, a few years ago, vampires were, of course, all the rage with True Blood and the Twilight movies. But now it's about zombies, and when I've talked to some people about this show, they say it's not just the storyline, it's that it makes viewers confront their fear of death. Either way, though, whether it's vampires or zombies, it's all pretty gruesome, so be warned. By all accounts, AMC's The Walking Dead is a smash hit. In just three seasons, a show about a police officer who wakes up from a coma to find a post-apocalyptic world overrun by zombies is taking over television. Its average audience has doubled in just three years to more than 10 million pairs of eyeballs this season. And it's helped the AMC network rise to the top of the cable heap. Their advertising revenue jumped 16% to $157 million in the last quarter of 2012. I think that the show's ratings have increased exponentially in this past season, both because the show itself has gotten better, it's gotten leaner and meaner and more efficient in the way it presents its adventure, but I also think that it's offering something that neither the networks nor pay cable television is, is offering, which is just this spectacle of chilling zombies. Andrea! You already know sex sells. Turns out the undead do too. Series star Andrew Lincoln, who plays Sheriff Rick Grimes, told CNN he's surprised by the success. This kind of reaction is sort of ridiculous. I mean, we're still <laughs> pinching ourselves. And I, I don't know. I mean, of course, you know, the apocalypse and that sort of theme is, is it seems to be around and in the air at the moment. <laughs> Soldiers will survive. And some say it's precisely the show's fear factor that is drawing the viewers in droves. I think the show works as a metaphor for uh, the kinds of threats and insecurities and enemies we feel in life, whether it's the economy or the threat of terrorism or the threat of home invasion. Uh, it, it, it exercises a lot of fears that people have. It's, it's a way of kind of work through the anxieties you have. And I think that's one thing that good pop culture does. It enables us to work through uh, things that trouble us and makes us feel better about ourselves. This Sunday, the show's third season ends, but fear not, zombie fans, it's still alive. Season four begins in October. And that guy at the end there was John Bernthal, who was on seasons one and two, and I actually had a conversation with him this morning, and he explained to me that the reason why the show is so successful is because it marries two audiences, this comic, sci-fi, horror, thriller audience that would watch the show no matter what, and then also the really intellectual, highbrow crowd that likes Mad Men and Breaking Bad, also on AMC. So that's why they think they're getting these tens of millions of viewers for each show. But it's going to be very challenging, especially for the geeks out there, because the season premiere of Game of Thrones on HBO is <clears throat> the exact same time as the season finale of Walking Dead on Sunday night. It's, it's a dilemma, and we, and we should also note, Aaron, that uh, tomorrow we will have a special preview of Game of Thrones uh, with one of the series co-creators, just, just so you know. This is why we have DVR, even though I don't have a DVR. I'm the only person left in America without that technology. To we'll, get you, we'll get you one.